That's okay. Oh. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Psychics Explained. I have a fun crew today for you. These are really great friends of mine. And we're here on a Sunday morning to be able to explain something to you that as one of our sting operations is kind of not, it doesn't get the press the other ones do, even though it was featured in the New York Times. And I will put the links in the description of the YouTube video. And it's called Operation Peach Pit. And it was designed for a specific purpose. And it was designed to be with a psychic we didn't know much about at all. And that was Matt Frazier. And we had controls and we had all kinds of, mm -hmm. it was just so much work to put it together. Um, and we'll go through the results with you all. Hello, YouTube listeners. Please subscribe, by the way. <laughs> and Kitty's wearing the blue wig for a reason. We'll explain. And Mark <laughs> Edward is here with us too, who was also a participant. He's sitting in a comfortable chair with a cat on his lap right now in my office. So. Nice. So yeah, this, this won't be. be lasting too long because it's, <laughs> it's too hot. <laughs> so let me introduce, let me let you introduce yourselves because um, why, don't, why don't we start with the Biddles? The Biddles. Okay. Hi. Go ahead. I'm Zoe. <laughs> <laughs> AKA. AKA. No, you're only Zoe if you have Not the Biddle. Oh, so Kenny, this is Zoe. <laughs> I'm actually Eddie. <laughs> and I'm Eddie. <laughs> Did you have a last name? I can't remember. I don't what? remember. I just remember Zoe. Oh man, that was hot. That was quick. I I'm know. sure you had. I'm sure you had a last name. I'm sure we did. I forget. I forget we, what it was. I yeah. just knew Zoe and Eddie. Yeah. When, and Eddie. when you when you wore that wig, and I, I saw it in photos from yeah. from the event. Did you wear it the whole time? Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. And how are you not hot? Because you have long hair to begin with. Just under that. It, we're yeah, born we, with this we ability. Deal. <laughs> we deal as women. We deal with wow. that. Higher tolerance. I mean, I'm I'm a big baby. <laughs> we no, even I did the same thing. Tolerance for pain. <laughs> I, I wore the hippie wig once, at, as I told you, uh, at a costume party, and I couldn't keep it on for half hour. It was like just it sweat hot. dripping down my face. I don't understand yes. how people do that. On a scale of, uh, of birth, I'm giving birth, <laughs> and wearing a wig for a few that. hours, yes, that's, that's like. It. That's down there in like the, you know, it's not 0.5 yeah. pain level or something like that. So, so Kenny and Donna Biddle are at Center for Inquiry right now. This is Kenny's right. office. And yep. where are you guys at? We are in Amherst. Amherst. New uh, York. New York, which is Buffalo, basically Buffalo. Right outside Buffalo. Um, and as you said, yeah, we're at the Center for Inquiry headquarters. This is the headquarters of the world. Uh, for the Center for Inquiry, and I am the chief investigator for CSI, which is the Committee for Skeptical Inquiry, which puts on uh, PsyCon and uh, also publishes Skeptical Inquiry. Oh, she's so, got a badge. She's official. Oh, yeah. That was a badge. That was uh, John Guy uh, arranged that. So I actually have a real chief like, investigator real badge. badge. It's not like a cheap plastic. No, badge. this is like this is like custom. real. You can't really uh, put that in your wallet, though. Pop it out. You have to wear that. You need, yeah, we're yeah, going to work on that. You know, I got to flip that out and be like, what's flip up? Flip it out. Uh, so, yeah, we we played uh, we played two yeah, people. Out, um, I was Eddie, and she you were Zoe. I was Zoe, yeah. And, and she wore the blue wig during the yes. entire event, just to be clear. Um, I did not. Uh, but I was uh, Eddie, and I know that I, I, I had, like, <laughs> a, an idea that my apartment was haunted, um, and that was pretty much it. And... And I know that we were all there as friends, like a reunion, a reunion kind of yeah. thing. Like that's the only information that we had. And I know I, I'm sure you'll explain it. Yeah, we're gonna have to oh, get into it because it's gonna get confusing. Yeah. No. Okay, Mark, come right, come over real quick and introduce yourself since you're standing up. Yeah, Mark. Hey. Hi, Mark. There he is. Hi, Mark. Hi, I'm uh, Mark good. Edward, and I'm waking up. <laughs> we're in california so it's totally different time zone yeah sunday is usually a day when we just lounge around languidly hmm. so uh it's our day i'm here to fill in if susan forgets anything or uh <laughs> particularly the technique that uh matt frazier matt used, frazier used yeah. uh, and i i picked up on which i thought was pretty good i i again a lot of times i will go and see these people because I will say, I'm going to put that in my act. <laughs> and I yeah, think it's fair game because, you know, 
they do that to me all the time. So, but it was pretty, pretty uh, interesting. But we'll get into that. Yeah, guys, we'll get into that. So, so I think that was the first mention of the, the psychic's name, the psychic's name. Matt Frazier. Matt, Matt Frazier. Frazier. Get off my chart, Matt. Matt Frazier, Matt Frazier from Meet the Frasers. Okay, who are you down there in the blue? In the my blue background. Okay, I am Rob Palmer, who uh, is a columnist for Skeptical Inquirer since 2018, and I've been writing a column uh, with the byline, uh, I think that's what it's called, The Well-Known Skeptic. Got into skepticism a few years before that when I joined this little-known group, the Gorilla Skeptics on Wikipedia, run by this well-known person, Susan Gerbic. <laughs> but and, I don't use the well-known Susan Gerbic name. And that's when I uh, started meeting all the other good people in skepticism, including Kenny and Donna, and everyone uh, from the Center for Inquiry and uh, CSI. And I uh, went to my first conference in 2017 and got deeply involved. Very exciting. I put together great teams of people, and that's what that's what this is all about: is putting together teams. These psychics can't know where you are. They don't know who we are. You blend in. It's we get almost other like they just don't have any paranormal powers at all. Almost, <laughs> almost like they can't. They don't. Yeah. They can't okay. Or talk to spirits or shit. <laughs> <laughs> so Operation Peach Pit. Yes. Mark names all these events, right? So he comes up with the name. I Google the heck out of them and make sure they don't have some sort of other name association. So Operation Peach Pit is very is not talked about all that often. I don't so, know why, but it isn't. But why Peach Pit for this one? Is there any uh, knowledge of that? No, no. Yeah. He's probably eating a peach at the time he named it. Right. I mean, <laughs> for reason, just oh, there's a peach. So oh, there's, a pit. there's oh, something yeah. about that's how we got tater tot the substance you make out of peach pits. I think it's laetril. oh laetril. So that's some pseudo scientific medicine. Yeah. Stuff. Well, they I took on know, laetril. No, your your team took on laetril. Nice. I'll, I'll explain in a minute. Okay. Hmm. Let's see if we can explain this. Let me think. Don't so over, don't we had just things. finished Operation <laughs> Pizza Roll where we busted Thomas John. And that was done in the bag. Everything was done. And Mark had known a New York Times reporter named Jack Hitt, because he'd done an interview with him, uh, like a lecture series with him or something like that. Connecticut, is that right? Harvard, I mean, no. Uh, Connecticut, right? Yeah. yeah. I think he's up in Connecticut. Yeah. Or Pennsylvania. <clears throat> No, it was, he was close by because he came he to wasn't that far. Hartford, yeah. Connecticut. The world, the U.S. He first did, library. Yeah. U.S.'s first library. So what Jack Hitt told Mark years ago was, if you ever catch a psychic in a hot read, I want to know because I'd like to do a story on it. Because catching somebody in a cold read is really, really easy. Mm -hmm. yeah. So Mark said to me, Susan, if we can get in the New York times if we ever catch a psychic in a hot read. So we were trying to catch somebody in a hot read and I was trying to figure out how to do that with controls to prove it, you know, cause I've done psychic investigations for years with other groups and they've always had flaws and flaws and flaws. And it was overthought. Not that this wasn't overthought, but I said, I'm going to do this. So we came out with a series of different things. We did Operation Bumblebee, Operation Ice Cream Cone. And then we did Pizza Roll, caught the hot read. And I gave it to Jack Hitt. And Jack Hitt said, this is fabulous. This is wonderful. But I can't use it because I wasn't there. To tell a story from the New York Times, you need to be as a reporter sitting in on it. You need to be okay. watching it happen. You need to be immersed in it. You need to be um you know dealing with the emotion the mood all that stuff even though i had saved everything from operation pizza roll with thomas john i had all the audio i had video i had all sorts of stuff but it wasn't enough to do a new york times article because they're really really strict about that so i said okay jack would it be all right for you to sit in on another sting different psychic different event and and from the very beginning and watch it unfold and he said yes that will do it so we went into to operation peach pit knowing fully well that we were not there to sting a psychic 
we were not going to catch him in a hot read. We didn't, we didn't have any clue. We didn't know much about Matt Frazier. <clears throat> Where is he located in Pennsylvania? Well, Susan, so uh, I, I, I would amend that a little bit personally because we weren't sure. Otherwise, we wouldn't have went into all the effort of making the face faked Facebook accounts. And That's true. Right. We didn't know. Yeah. He's but we we didn't know that he if he would have taken it. But we knew we were going to go to a big show and the, getting into a big show and be getting read is hard. Mm -hmm. So we didn't we didn't go in with the expectation we would catch him. Well, I didn't go into the expectation we'd catch. Uh, Thomas John either that was that was bizarre right everything worked out well but okay so I, I, the idea was to have Jack the stars watch aligned. this the stars were <laughs> mm -hmm. somebody might say that but not us Venus was in retrograde so yeah. that's, that's where it was <laughs> so what we do when we do do these things and they change over time but what we were doing is we were creating a situation where it was double blinded so that the people who are attending the event do not know the information that their that their personal information because i think when you, when you're validating your own information i think that's it's so biased and so vague and a lot of mediums will tell me that they'll say well i gave him a reading and he validated it and that's evidence it's like can I hear that reading? Yeah, it's, it's, no, yeah, it's not. <laughs> when you go into something like that, you're you are trying to make everything fit, and it's just a natural thing. It, it's just naturally what we do. You tell me something about like, oh, I, I feel like there's a there's a guy, and we do it all the time. Like even in the show, you were doing it earlier. Like when you're like, oh, I think it was. Uh, I think we met Jack from so and so, and you're like, Mark, was it this this? And you're trying to fill in the blank and make it work. I mean, with good information, obviously, but we do that same with psychics. Right. When they give us a general description, like I see a, like an older gentleman that has passed oh, on. Oh, that's my dad. Exactly. We, we that, fill it in. Dad. Yeah. And then they forget that we filled it in. We'll say, no, no, he knew my dad's name was uh, George. <laughs> and it's like, he didn't say that, but we're not <laughs> listening to the recording because almost all the time they don't have a recording or they right. won't release it mm -hmm. because they say, oh, it's too private. And, and one or, of the other things that gets that makes that complicated is you know the frailty of human memory mm -hmm. and one of the best examples i've ever heard live happen on a podcast yeah tell this was one on see i oh know no, what you're going to say yeah oh because i've said it before oh no or ross because Ross oh no ross and carrie right Th they had visited a medium and ross and carrie were had notes and they were reading it back on the podcast about what happened and ross said but, you know, the one thing she got just right on, she came up to me and said, your grandmother's name was, I don't remember now, but say Carrie. And like she, she and Ross was right. She got that right. And, and Carrie, oh, I'm sorry. I shouldn't do that. That's confusing. It's Susan. Your grandmother's name is Susan. And he, and he, he thought that she just came up with that name. And that's what he wrote in his notes. So that was his memory from the time. <laughs> Carrie looks at her notes, you know, sitting in the same reading and said, no, she didn't do that. She said she was x or y or z or susan and he had no recollection that she had spit out a whole bunch of names he just remembered and they were there as skeptics knowing how this works and he did Taking not remember notes. that yeah right. that's astounding to me that's a very good example and i've had that happen many times too when i'm transcribing something or i'm trying to relate something in the psychic world no mm -hmm. i leave to get a cup of coffee and they take over the chair <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the cats run us over here I understand that. Um, so spoiled, rotten. <laughs> so cats used to be worshipped as gods in ancient Egypt, and they have never forgotten that fact. Not in this house. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Mark calls our house catnip corners, and we don't live on a corner. But, uh, <laughs> so exactly, I've I've tried to transcribe something, and you're starting yeah. to get tired, and you're and you're just going through, and you're you're like starting to take shortcuts They're like oh yeah he said this and oh it means right. this and you're like no stop that Susan you can't do that because I'm making assumptions <laughs> again too about what I they're going to say because oh yeah he's going to talk about his grandmother right now you know you want to write that down you're like but that's not what he exactly said he said I'm getting an older figure an older woman that looks uh, sort of like a grandmother and then the person says yeah that's my grandmother Right. And, I, and, and I'm and I'm want to write down, okay, so now he gets his grandmother. It's like, no. Right. 
And the other common one is I'm seeing somebody wearing a uniform, maybe military, Navy, Army, maybe the UPS driver, maybe Postal Service. Go, yeah, my, my uncle was a mailman. And, and then they come out of it. Yeah, he knew my uncle was a mailman. He knew my uncle was a mailman. Yeah. So it's, anyway, where were we going with this? Oh, my God. Matt Frazier. <laughs> Matt Frazier. Matt Frazier. So we had to. Thank you, Mark. So what we had to do is recreate this situation where we did with pizza roll we, we took all the facebook pages that we had created for facebook i mean for uh pizza roll we changed we we locked them down made them private and then i had a team of people they were on it that um, were formed on the internet on facebook and this is rob was a member of this and they call themselves laetril which is like peach pits um uh how do you say it? The chemical they extract from peach pits. Okay. Right. It's supposed to be used for all sorts of pseudoscience kind of stuff and things like that. So they created a Facebook page. I don't think I was in that at all. Mark and I weren't in it. And it was a, a separate private Facebook group. How many people are in there, Rob, you think? Oh, I don't remember. This is from 2018. Like Way 10. Too, and plus past the pandemic. I Way remember too there long being a lot of people involved. Yeah. But yeah, so I looked back on the page I created that I was in charge of updating today. And there were a lot of people posting as my friends and about the, the Fraser event and things like that. Maybe, right. So there's at least five or six people. names. Yeah. So what happens is they're creating Facebook pages for fictional characters who are going to be attending the Matt Fraser event. And giving them backstory, giving them names, giving them photos. But we didn't exactly know who was going to go to these events quite yet. Right. And the idea is, is to attend the event as these characters with personas. <clears throat> and the people who would be attending were not in the Laetrile group. They were outside people, probably who lived very close to the medium that we were going to investigate. And I picked Matt Frazier. Because he, the reason, part of the reason why I picked him is because he was new, he was eager, he was um, internet savvy, he mm -hmm. was uh, starting to get media attention, he was in the East Coast, I knew I wanted to use the Biddles, <laughs> so I wanted it someplace close to you guys, and so uh, Jack Hitt was like, I'll, I'll attend whatever, so wherever you make it, I'll attend it, you know, it doesn't matter to me, and so I asked Kenny and Donna, I said, here's the schedule for, um, Matt Frazier, what day do you want? What would work for you guys? Because I asked if you guys would attend and if you could find yeah. some friends to attend with. Yeah. And Kenny said, I think you just picked something off of there, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We just picked a date that <clears throat> fit close. at least for us. Yeah. Because, yeah. um, you know, that was the important part. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it didn't sure matter we anybody else. Uh, yeah. Yeah. We picked a picked a date and then it went from there. Um, I recruited some people. Uh, that was that was interesting because i basically had to tell people look we're going undercover you will have a story you will be lying to people just to to be blunt you're going to be lying because mm -hmm. we don't know all the information we're going to have false names that we're going to give people we're going to tell stories we're going to make stories up as we're talking to people so i need you to be comfortable with this and <laughs> i did approach a few people that were not comfortable with it and that was it. They said, okay, you know, I, I, I don't want to do this. And I said, all right, that's cool. You know, like I get it. Um, but eventually be, we did come, uh, we had a team of six. To be uh, clear, Kenny, for the people who don't <clears throat> know, you know, savvy on this. So you were going to go to be sitters at a public event for Matt Fraser, but of course you wouldn't be talking about this because he's supposed to pull it out of you. So who were you going to be talking about these things with? That would be my question. Well, we would be talking to other attendees. Yeah, uh, I wanted him to. Mm -hmm. I wanted him to hang out with people, we were mingling, talk to people in the bar, talk to people in the yeah everywhere. So we bought the VIP tickets. Well, no, they were general tickets. There were no VIP. Oh, there was no VIP. But yeah, you were able to meet not. up with them after. That's That'd because be, everybody could. Everybody did. Yeah. Oh. It was how large was uh, how large was the group? It was. I think there was a thousand About people. A thousand. Wow. Yeah. 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 So we knew that it was really going to be. Uh, uh, yeah. you're getting a attention that's why the blue wig so okay so going through with the story really quick again before we get to too many of the details the idea was that they would attend with some basic information of what their character 
was doing and they were going to remain in character from the moment they got out of their cars yes show up at the event in character uh they were going to take pictures oh i've got to show some photos so <laughs> they were going to show photos kenny and Madonna and the other four people took pictures at the event of mm-hmm. hey we're at the event and then they sent the photos to Leatril. Well, you guys didn't have contact with Leatril. Oh, good. Here's some photos. Okay. Thank you, Rob. Somebody's got somebody's on it. <laughs> There's some uh-huh. photos. There we are. There you are. Yeah. So they took pictures from the event and it got sent oh, to name, somebody privately, like Rob. And then Rob turned around <laughs> and put them up on their Facebook pages. And we can show these Facebook pages now because they're all locked down. You can't get to them right now. Right. Nobody could find them right now. Unless Actually, you- I, I did not do the, them. So the, once no, the event started, here. other people were posting them to the account. So, so oh. yeah, interestingly. It's hard to remember all this. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Can- So, so here's, so what they do is they go in and they're able to look at this and see the different people who are in there. And I mean, and so it looks like we're tagging the Matt Frazier event. So Matt Frazier is now able to um, access them. Yeah. yeah, Access those videos. So, uh, and look at them and see, and see, Hey, somebody's attending my event. And one of them has this blue wig on and as they click on the Facebook pages, they can say, and there's some really interesting backstories on these people i wonder if we can find them in the crowd there's one with a big right. wig on and let's give them a story and that was the idea so and hypothetically also, how would matt or his people know to find these pages by tagging we the tagged event. matt fraser so we it would be matt fraser event page. tagging it yeah. right the the event was tagged Where did you go? Um, so somebody yeah. who who does his social media would be monitoring that yeah. we hoped hypothetically and and then say oh look these people are at the event yeah right right they have an interesting backstory they look like they're very compelling people they have you we should be able to find this one in the crowd she's coming then and then read all the stuff on the page hypothetically uh, and i so different people were doing all the different characters i don't know if you had one person do multiple characters but in my case i was just doing one character and so i had made a whole backstory from the moment that i knew this was going to happen right and in my and it was in fact kenny's character ed caffrey and so i was able to create any ed caffrey i wanted to without his input except that we wanted it to be different than the real kenny biddle and it was so the opposite of the real kenny biddle. yeah because we why why would why would we want it to be opposite of the character that kenny is playing well, because Kenny is a known skeptic, you know, former ghost hunter turned paranormal investigator, you know, debunks these things. So it was much better to have somebody who was believed he was haunted, believed in ghosts, believed in alternative medicine, followed Deepak Chopra and, you know, was was thrilled <laughs> that Matt Frazier was going going to be able to de- determine who these ghosts were in his, in his apartment in Las Vegas. <laughs> Well, and also the other reason why we want to make sure that they are different <laughs> is because like the character I played in Operation P- Pizza Roll, I was a twin. My twin brother had died and none of that's true. So right. it has to be something that is not real because right. like if we had said like Kenny had a son. Right. Right. Yeah. We can't. We can't. We can't say that because Kenny does have a son. Right. So right. if we yeah, so don't. I had, I, he was a bachelor. He was living on his own. Yeah. So we have to have a character Vegas. that, because if right. Matt Frazier came to you and said something about you having a son, you would go, well, is he reading the Facebook page or is right. he right. really in touch with somebody right. in the other world who knows about my son? And it, the other you, world, ha- <laughs> you, yeah. have to, you have to know. Right. You have to completely separate it. So you know if they're reading your Facebook page or if they're reading your you. Right. So, right. so that in my case, it was good because I knew Kenny's story reasonably at the time. And I made sure everything was the opposite. Yeah. And we don't know who, who what was. Oh, so what happens is um, Jack Hitt is in the Leo group. He's watching. Jack Hitt is, he's like an, I think of it as an anthropologist, somebody just sitting off to the side, not saying anything, but able to watch and read and interact if he wanted to, if he needed some clarification, like, why did you do that? He could have asked. I don't know if he did or not. 
because that wasn't in Leotrol. But um, and we had another group that was also a Facebook secret group that discussed, oh, tagging things and just the the structure of the thing. And Kenny and Donna were not in that group. They weren't in Leotrill. They weren't in any of the Facebook groups. I need to make that clear. They were completely and their other four friends were completely right. out of nothing. the picture. We didn't know anything except what you guys told us. Yeah. And so we <laughs> met on Skype. This is how long ago it was we were meeting on Skype. Right. And I said, all right, we're ready to get started on this. And Jack went to your house, right? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Jack came to your house and your four friends were there. Yeah, we had a meeting. Yep. And, and uh, you two were there and Mark and I were on Skype mm -hmm. and we, and I have this all recorded by the way. And we were there because um, you record everything, right? Can you? Oh yes. yeah. Everything. Yeah. Everything. It, even this is being recorded from what I understand. <laughs> I hope so. Oh, yeah, I hope so. Me too. <laughs> we'll have to start over. So so then Kenny and all of you guys are there in the house. And I pull up on Skype and I'm like, hello, everybody. Nice to meet mm -hmm. you. Four people that I don't know. And and some of your other team were there as yeah. well. Yeah, oh, I yeah, was, I think I so. Was so it was a full, full I, I was bunch of a full group. Yeah. And I had a list of what Leah Trill had told me. And it was like the basics of, of who you guys were and what you were doing and the characters. Rob, you weren't there, right? Yeah, I was attending that session. That's the only time I ever saw Jack hit. Oh, so tell us what you thought, Rob. Oh, I don't remember that much of the details. I remember you were all sitting around discussing what you were going to do. I think some of the Thomas John thing came up also. Uh, preliminarily, uh, you, you discussed, I think, the breakup of just what you described, that we had these Facebook groups and what was going to happen with creating the false characters, that sort of a thing. Yeah, we didn't have a lot of, um, I didn't want anybody to have a lot of detail. I, so, I wanted it to be so very can, vague. To can, Ken, can Kenny tell us what he remembers? Yeah, that, well, that not at this not an event yet. I'm still a at the, long time ago. But at you, the you, pre- at yeah. that, at that, um, do you remember what you knew about your character when it started? What, what, you know, so, what you were going to be able to tell the people you met there and that sort of thing? Basically, I, and I actually, I can cheat because I, um, Kenny wrote an article. I wrote, I wrote <laughs> the article I wrote for Skeptical Inquirer. I included mm -hmm. what I knew and basically that I was, uh, I was a bachelor. I flew in to meet friends, um, for this event. Uh, I believe my apartment was haunted and, that's about it um i also apparently had uh pictures of orbs thank yes, you yes you did um, <laughs> thanks jackass because <laughs> the people who don't know kenny orbs. used to be into foot, foot uh, photographing ghosts and thought uh, his photographs were proven ghosts so i had to do that uh yeah so that that's basically all i knew right i'm pretty sure that you lived in vegas i lived in yeah. vegas yeah mm -hmm. um I'm just looking up the the article here, but I think that's that's it. And okay. I had to basically make up everything else. Mm -hmm. um, Worry about big sugar. <laughs> that was the first post I ever did when they took over the account. Oh, my God. I'm looking. I'm cheating too because I've I've written a book there, on there's, there's all this, sugar. and this is one of the chapters. And I'm just looking at it right now. I've forgotten about that. Sugar. So, in your Facebook sugar. page, it's very detailed. Your fake Facebook page is very detailed. You guys have never seen these. We oh, still you, haven't you, seen it. You'd yeah. like this one, Kenny. I had a ghosts are science. And here's the EMF. <laughs> oh, you know, you oh. <laughs> I bought and I, I had you buying the EMF. Totally <laughs> not me. <laughs> totally. You uh you are a handyman, sheetrock, truck driver, self-employed. Oh, God. <laughs> and you are from wh where is that in Illinois? Where is it? Aliquin? Al go. Algonquin, Illinois is where you're from. That's your Illinois. hometown. Oh my nice. gosh, I'm so glad nobody asked where I was from. <laughs> <laughs> I, can't, I can't pronounce. Why did you pick that, Rob? You could just say, I, I don't remember. I've been drinking <laughs> too much because I had him drinking quite a bit in Las Vegas, I have to say. <laughs> you were doing a lot of drinking. <laughs> yeah, you moved to Philadelphia and then you moved to Denver. Then you live, now you live in Vegas. Wow. And you yeah, went to Jacobs live. High School and Aliquin, Illinois. 
Did you just pick that out of a? No, like, I think that was in the in the uh, thing originally, and I had no reason to change it. Oh yeah, because remember these are old Facebook yep. pages, and some of these Facebook okay. pages have been going around since two thousand, whatever the beginning of Facebook was, and right. we just keep changing things right. and moving things, and right. so. So I, I added the part easier. that he had some connection with the Philadelphia area, and that's why he was being invited back there for a bachelor party. And that's why he would be there at the oh, time. And right. it just coincidentally right. happened. Oh, Matt Frazier's going to be there. This would be great. I got to get tickets. So, yeah. Oh, he's, you're colorblind. That's oh. that's interesting. That's, that's real. real. <laughs> I don't remember that one. Yeah, you're colorblind. What, what, bad what bad what, at planning. What date was this? What date is this? Where are you getting this from? I'm looking at my book. The book I've, I don't remember that. That I copied from. Um, I copied a lot of this from. Yeah, so, so so as I said, some some of the the anything that was before twelve seventeen, and maybe some of the stuff that's in the profile was not something I added because, as you said, this page was used by other people, and if I didn't see any reason to change it, I just left it the way it was. That's what okay. happened there. Yeah. Okay, you want to hear about Zoe? <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Okay, so some of this information was given to to Donna. Donna, what do you remember? We told you about your character. I honestly, I don't remember a lot. I don't. Who are you dating? Eddie. I have no idea. Oh. No. I don't no, think he was I, your boyfriend. I have no idea. I don't. I don't recall. Where did you live? Australia? <laughs> I, am. I don't know where I came from. You're in Australia. Australia. Look, I, I got it right. <laughs> so, so were you doing the accent while you were there, Donna? No, no, <laughs> not really. I remember, um, I do remember like getting there and I remember um, sitting at the bar and just chatting with some people that were also um, going to see him. So like, I remember just, you know, being not Donna Biddle, <laughs> but yet again, I, I was really, because I just, I just played me, you know, like with you were just friendly and outgoing and yeah, because that's how I am, you know, <laughs> um, there they are. There yeah. 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 That's a that's good picture. Yeah. That was at the bar and we realized actually it, that was the funny part of it. We went to the bar because that was in the casino and didn't realize that the venue was on the opposite side of of where we were but there were no signs like there was a sign we got a picture in front of um i think for the title of the article we right. got a picture in front of one of the signs but it didn't tell you where so we actually struggled with where we're where supposed we were to go going. you're not psychic they should tell you yeah right. well everybody did there too because everybody but as it was getting closer to the event time, everybody was like, where do we Starting have to be? To like, where, yeah. Yeah, where, where should we be? Because there was a theater. There were there were two theaters. Mm -hmm. That's what it was. Because there was a theater right there where we went in at the casino. And it looked like, because the like the show poster was outside of that, we thought that's where we went. So once it got to be like a half hour before or 20 minutes before, people started moving to it. And then we were told, no. This no, is the wrong place. Yeah. Go over here. And I was like, oh shit, we gotta, we gotta run. We gotta hike it. <laughs> In order to make it was like trying to get a connecting flight. <laughs> we it was running. like Vegas, you know, like not as bad as Vegas, but when you're in the wrong spot in Vegas and you have to get there, right? You know, it's a lot further than you realize. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. It's like an airport. You get so, yeah, exactly. follow something you are in deep. so this post is a good example of, of one of the, so this was the day of the event, clearly, uh, January 14th. D. Williamson, I don't remember who that was, uh, posted it to my to my, Ed Caffrey's page. Uh, you know, I can't believe we're all here in one place. Finally, you know, I'm so happy to be here. And then I responded, "This is amazing." Other people yeah. who were there responded. So yeah, that's the way this kind of thing. So works. to be clear, Ed Caffrey is Rob. Rob is running that Facebook page, and the character is Ed Caffrey is Kenny, but Kenny yeah. has no no way of getting no into that facebook page he doesn't know what's on that facebook page and that was the idea we're trying to double blind it so that whatever is on that facebook page whatever content is on there if you get to talk to matt frazier or even another psychic if there was other psychics wandering around right they they could not they would only be able to read you if they could really read the facebook you. page 
Yes. Ken, no, Kenny and Donna. Oh, right. oh Kenny and yeah, Donna. Yes. So if they were really talking to the dead, like they say they can, they would say, hey, you, your name starts with a K. This is your wife. You know, right. you guys live son, here. Blah, blah, blah. You've had yeah. these dead people in your life. And, you know, and it would be real dead people who <laughs> right. were around you like they pertain to do. But what we're doing is we're blinding it so that if they get information from the Facebook page, I know it's, it's over there. there. I'm sorry. We're, I'm trying there. to find the book. Um, go ahead. You keep talking. Book either. Keep talking. I'm going to look. Oh, actually, I don't have Matt Fraser's book. I have. I could not find. Um, I could not find uh, Tom Stone's book anywhere that we had yeah. autographed. I was bugging the crap out of me. I'm like, it's somewhere here. We had our. Okay, Zoe. 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 Yes. Okay. Here. I don't know if you were giving any of this information because whenever I had that Skype call with you guys, I gave you just a little bit little of little tidbits. Yeah. yeah. Cause you needed to be able to raise your hand and say something. Yeah. You had to be able to have some background. Okay. So Zoe was desperate and dateless. Dateless. <laughs> you moved to Australia about three or four years ago to work for an oil company. SO Australia, which is like Exxon Mobil. Okay. Oh, so she's not native Australian, so she. No, no, she just moved time. there. Oh, okay, hey, he yeah. met her dream man, Australian Wayne Rainley. Okay, they were involved in an eighteen-month relationship with Wayne was killed in an industrial accident. Oh, oh I'm so right. sorry, I Zoe. Didn't know any of that. Wow, twelve months ago. How about that? Wow. So he was in the all USA visiting family when Wayne died. God, I'm sad right now. Just I am too. That. She feels guilty about that by being in America when he was in Australia but yeah. he, and also helpless because she was so far away and Wayne's family took over all the arrangements. Gosh, Donna, that's yeah. just sad, Zoe. Right? And then you will be carrying or wearing a C C3PO pendant that Wayne had given you. You had a necklace that was C3PO. Oh, yes, I did. Yeah. Yes. I told you guys to wear hard. something. I told you yes. to do stuff okay. like that. I did have that. Yeah, and you're visiting in the USA and decided to join the party. At, and then your father died a few years ago and your mother has not gotten over it. Very sad. Very so sad. So that was your story. Okay. And that was enough backstory that if somebody wanted to, had read the Facebook page, they would have been like, you know, talking to you about what it's like in Australia. And right. you would have been like, what would you say? <laughs> I would have been depressed. <laughs> I mean, no, you don't know that stuff, but what would you say? They were like, oh, I hear oh. you live in Australia. I see that you live far away. And you'd be like, you knew you lived in Australia. You'd be like, oh yeah, I do. <laughs> I'm over here to meet some friends. <laughs> yeah. Change the subject quickly away from yes, me, I don't yeah. know enough about Australia. To exactly. do the, the overall idea, like from our meeting the, the night before was basically go with the flow. Go with it. You know, like whatever they said, whatever Matt said, just agree right and and go with it and you know if you if you got in trouble just act nervous and and say something like that like oh i'm sorry i'm so nervous i'm, I'm actually talking to you you know and i can't remember i'm having a brain fart or something like that you know like that that was the way we were told to go and i mean that unfortunately i mean that was easy for say, me because my memory sucks anyway <laughs> <laughs> well the idea was to see where they went with it because if yeah. if 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 you had had Matt Fraser walk up to you and call you out in the audience, Zoe, with the yes. blue egg, and if he had said to you something about Australia, we have him. Right. That was it. That was it. That's wouldn't matter you if you had blown it and right. said, "Yeah, I don't know where I live in Australia. I'm too nervous to talk to you." It wouldn't have mattered because there's no way he would have gotten that information. Well, and right. it, and you're he could a big have got it out of your brain, you're I guess. A big Star Wars fan, especially of Anthony Daniels. And you would have go what? What? <laughs> C three PO. And she would have. I, I would have definitely. <laughs> and I would have been like, <laughs> <laughs> Wayne. If they had mentioned Wayne to you, you wouldn't have known what he was talking about, right? No, there's only would one you? Wayne that I do know, it, and he's a family member. But I wouldn't. Know. It would have been some of you be like, no. like, oh, like bursting. No, tears. no. But if 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 Matt had said something to you like. You know, I know you've flown a long ways to be here. You would have known what that was. Yes. But if you had said, 
um, if he had said, you know, I know that you're missing somebody really badly and um, you feel a lot of guilt over that because he's he you were so far apart when he died. That would have you probably still would have been okay on that. Mm -hmm. Right there. We're, we're seeing it. This is what would have happened. I would have been, been like, like, yep. Not yeah. in your head. And if and if exactly. he said um this was this is a guilty feeling that you had that that you know you were so far apart when he died and i know he was the love of your life and you'd be like would you have been able yeah. to get emotional do you think? <laughs> i think it would have been perfect i think she would have been able to, to bring it up on cue like getting sad because just telling the story like if you tell a story like that and you're in the moment yeah, I think she, she would have. She would have been like, able to do it. I, I think, think tears would have been able to come down, and I, yeah, I, I would have been, been on the side going, "Damn!" <laughs> <laughs> I think he should, I think he would have pulled it off, or at least enough, because again, it's an emotional moment when Thomas John pulled, picked up on me at um, Operation Pizza Roll, and I knew I had him. Right. So it was like I felt like a lot of emotion, and I wasn't crying, but I felt very like. Oh my gosh, I can't like, believe this is, this is happening. Doing. He he did this. He's called on me and he's being recorded. And oh my God, I can't believe we just caught him. So I felt this a massive amount of emotion. Right. So I bet that would have happened to you too. If he was right there in front of you, I wanted oh, him you're to being fall recorded. On so bad. Like I was just like, come on, come on. And you were all I given. We were told to take Kleenex and stuff like that. And if yes. you called on, you pull out the Kleenex, you start, Mark, this is Mark saying, he says, you take a tissue and you twist it. You just like be like nervous. Yeah. Like you twist nervous. up your, you put it in your pocket and you twist it and then you have it. And then if you have to, then you can dab at your eyes and stuff like yeah. this. And that hides a lot, you know? Yeah. When you're laughing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you would have been laughing. I think you would have been just stunned. I think it's yeah. Susan, Susan's got her, her her tissues up her face going, Oh, you were so good. Oh, we got you. Oh we got God. you, sucker. I can't believe we got him. Oh my gosh. And it's being you're recorded. Oh, this is brilliant. I can't believe the trap it. like the coyote. <laughs> oh my goodness. You're done. You're done. You're dude. done, dude. You're done. I got gotcha. you. He did get excited. Um when he picked the road that um jack hit was jack in. was in that was oh so jack yeah. hit didn't want to sit with you guys right we were right. all scattered in well, different actually, no, <laughs> some of well, us some were. of us uh, like diana uh one of our friends she sat by herself um uh, the rest of us sat together jack hit he was three rows behind, behind us. us yeah um because he yeah he didn't want to be near us or uh, associated with us which i can understand um but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he was, but he sat behind us, and yeah, yeah, the Matt picked his row, and we can go into that too if you want. Yeah, to. we'll do that. Mark wants yeah. to talk about that. Let me see if he's got a cat on him. I, I he's got a cat that. on him. Uh, the the he can easily be flung. <laughs> he's gonna fling the cat. So there was Vicky, Gregory, Kathy, Vicky. I remember that. Um, okay, who else? Heather. Yeah, Heather had a long one. Who played Heather? I don't know, but boy, she was, she had, so there was people that were there. They had relationships in the past with other people and they were hoping to get back together again. I mean, there was all this backstory and it was all right at the, at the, at the top of the Facebook page because that's putting so these on you guys guys is a lot of freaking work from behind the scenes because right. not only do you have to develop the character, but you have to have everything that you want the psychic to be able to to find rise to the top so that the best parts of it are really close to the recent Facebook page. Right. You don't want the guy to have to go, you know, two Hold years down. into your history. We want to see that right at the top. Right, Rob? You can talk yeah. about that. Yeah. Well, so yeah, since I had the page, that's what I was doing. I would I would post periodically just your average kind of a thing. Did you see the new series that started or something from the news? But, you know, that was just filler. Most of the posts had something to do with uh, Ed's interests in, you know, these fringe things. And that was really the, the crux of it, just to give the impression that, you know, if, he, if, if Matt was going to be doing a hot read, then, you know, uh, Ed is somebody who's into all these sorts of things and would, you know, definitely believe that he's a psychic medium. Very cool. Right. So we had to have... We had to have 
um, that is really hard, the timing. And plus, we don't always know who's going to attend. Right. So right. talk about that, Rob. How did we, like, we know Donna and Kenny were going to attend. So, well, I was pretty sure. That, but... you were, I think you were almost positive of that, unless something happened at the last minute. But pretty early on, I did post, um, I don't know if you have it available or I can post it, the profile picture, <laughs> which was the one I picked for the page because uh, I thought this would be kind of clever. And, and let's see if I can get to it. Yeah, let me do the share of this. This is uh, the profile picture I posted. So it's kind of got Kenny there, but also enough of him is obscured so that someone else could have replaced him. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it shows 47 friends. Those Some of those are people on our team, but a yeah. lot of them are people who are in, who follow Matt Frazier, follow Thomas John, follow past oh yeah 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 i forgot that i went out of my way to go to other people's pages on facebook that were open who like were paranormal followers or deepak chopra followers or whatever and okay. friend them so yeah. yeah so they friended dad cat oh nice <laughs> so they had to yeah so we had to we had to try to get friendships with other people who followed these psychics because we wanted them to look real right we didn't right. want to look right real. right Right. So, I, so yeah. I, I felt a little bad about that because now these are real people and I didn't want to, you know, realizing they're reading this page, I didn't want to post anything that would be, you know, I'll put injurious to them. So I didn't really go into a lot of alternative medicine stuff. I did do some paranormal stuff like he was touching on Flat Earth even. Someone, oh, he saw some, Earth. Yeah, he saw some series he saw. He said, oh, wow, no. look at this. Does anyone else buy this? Rob, when that one day comes and somebody looks at me and goes, Ed? <laughs> I was like, you know what? I'm calling you up right now. I'm gonna bitch you out. <laughs> but but yeah, I, I you know okay, I like uh, you know he likes Deepak Chopra. He's into mysticism, but I didn't want to put anything like you know uh, this was before the vaccination. But I've kept up the page a little bit. I said you know I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything anti-vax once the pandemic started. You know I didn't want to. Um, cause anyone to do anything that I would consider to be dangerous because of Ed's uh, crazy screwball ideas. <laughs> so, well, that's, that's a, that's a good point. And, and we can expand on that because when we were there waiting for the show to start and we were at the bar, we had to, ch we were chatting up people. We were meeting other uh, attendees um, and one, one, uh, not couple, but a mother daughter mm -hmm. that we met uh, were there and, we were, I think you talked to them first and then yeah. I came over and we were chatting and kind of exchanging our backstories and found out that the, the woman had lost her son. Um, and she was there trying to get one more message from her son, like mm -hmm. just, you know, Hey, are, you know, is, is he okay? And we also learned that she had attended several of Matt Fraser's, uh, uh, shows. Oh. So she was a repeat customer, um, and had not get, had not gotten picked yet. Right. So she was there trying to get one more. And then when she tells us the story, I mean, it's heartbreaking, you know, right. to hear this because she, she's obviously still a morning and she's not moving on. But then she's asking what I'm doing there. And my my moral dilemma inside internally was like, now I have to lie to this person. Right. I have to mm. tell a story that that's completely yeah. untrue and just honestly bullshit her because I'm playing this character. And I feel bad because she was she's pouring her heart out here right. to me. Mm -hmm. And now in return, I'm giving her a false story. Um, but I understand oh. what my job was, you know, and that's what I was there to do. So not not destroy her hopes and dreams, but to to go undercover and see if we could expose this. Um, so it was it was difficult. Um, I mean, I, I'm still I'm in the cosplay, so I could still act. Um mm -hmm. And, and I mean, it wasn't a problem, but that came up. And that's something like I mentioned in the article that I wrote about. I'm it. glad you brought that up because that is really the important dilemma for mm -hmm. skeptics is how much, you know, like you said at the beginning, we had to tell people we're going to lie and we're going to give them. Yeah. Money. yeah. And, yeah. and if that's a if that's a problem that you can't do, because we ran into that all the time, the skeptic community. And that's part mm -hmm. of the reason why we've had so many fails in people trying to do stings in the past is that they won't give them money or they, they try to sneak in, or they will buy the cheap tickets. And if you buy the cheap tickets, you're going to be sitting in the back and nobody's going to give you any information. You're there to learn or, right. or investigate or whatever. You've got to, you've, 
you have to be able to get in there. Mm-hmm. I the best advice I got one of one of the best pieces of advice I got from Joe Nickel. Um, mm-hmm. And it was one time I came up here the first time I got to meet him um, and I interviewed him and we were talking and I asked him a question that was like this. Like, how do you justify paying money to see a psychic, you know, right. to to sit for a psychic? How do you justify that? And he said, like, I could write about him from an outsider perspective, but thirty five dollars or fifty dollars, I can do more damage by just investing that and then getting the inside information and being able to write out exactly how they're doing it. I can do more damage that way. That's well worth the $50 investment that I'm putting in. And I I was like that. I can't argue with that. I mean, that's, that's true. That makes good sense. I, I, I always want to be boots on ground. I want to be in there to see it. I don't want to write from outside just, you know, Oh, I saw it on TV. It sucks. (laughs) I don't have that perspective. I don't have that personal perspective. So doing this, is beneficial. I mean, right. it, I don't like giving him money, but you gotta. Chip you Coffee gotta. told me, we we paid Chip Coffee like sixteen hundred dollars, I think, when in Operation Bumblebee. Ooh. But and he said, and when he found out what we'd done, he says, "Thanks, I bought a refrigerator." And I said, right? <laughs> like he doesn't care. He doesn't yeah. care. No, well, what I know, I, I think he really cared. And I, I, I was, I was going to write to him and say, "Hey, can I send you a?" Um, can you give me your address? I want to send you a one of those magnets to front of the refrigerator of a picture of you and I. <laughs> he took a picture with me because he didn't we, know I was a skeptic. He thought I was one of his fans. So we have a beautiful picture pictures. of our group with Matt Frazier. Yeah. He even signed our book to Zoe I and know. Ed. Right, How right. No. How perfect was so that? And he signed it, Ed. Oh, wrong signed page. it to Zoe and Zoe Ed. Eddie and Zoe. <laughs> His psychic power. And that's right there. That's evidence just right in there. That one moment. That picture he took with you. Well, wait, wait, we'll get to that in a second. I will, I really want to stop back and go back okay. really quick before we take a quick break of what you said about the ethics of this and how, um, why was it that you had to stay in character to the people at the bar or people who were attending? Because we've had, I've had every team I've done Every time time we've done this, I've said you have to stay in character everywhere because you and you can't be like, actually, I'm here as a, as a skeptic and, and this is a bunch of bullshit. You know, you right. can't do that. Mm-mm. You don't know who you're talking to. Number one, they could be the guide into um, getting more information. And we found that out in nice. many cases yeah. where people have stayed in character, like at the Vegas show they went to in um, Thomas John's Vegas show. And they just hung out with people who looked like they were his friends and stuff. And the stuff that they were told was amazing, but they wouldn't have told it to him if they knew they were a skeptic, right. they were right. in, in, right. infiltrating. You don't know what you're going to hear. So you stay in character through the whole thing, even till the end, even, oh, yeah. even into the parking lot to go home. You have to. It's part of the ruse because people change their behavior. If they know that you're a skeptic, I mean, when you, in this kind of situation, when people know what you're really there for, um, or if you're investigating, they change their attitude. They're more aware of what they're saying. They won't mm-hmm. say certain things in front of you because they don't want you to know, um, or they act differently. So and Kenny knows that. Yeah, I, mean, I, I see that all the time. Every time I attend a, an event, if I'm if I'm there incognito, it's cool. Everyone is more relaxed, and then once someone says oh i know you you're you're a skeptic you're you write for skeptical fire stuff i you, you almost see people stiffen up like they oh now they're on guard mm-hmm. and they won't talk about certain things or like i've had people actually tell me no i don't want to talk to you because of that um and they're more reserved about how they i even have friends that are in the in the paranormal community that tell me openly like when they see me come in and sit down they're more aware of what they're going to say and they change what they're going to say because they don't want me to pick it up the wrong way. Uh, or actually it would be the, the right way. Just. They're the wrong. Guarded with their talk. <laughs> yeah. And you know, the, the thing we need to do is we're trying to understand and it's very hard to understand like that woman telling you about her son and you know, you're not going to out her or anything. It's not like you're, right. you're 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 trying to get this information to expose her or make her feel stupid or whatever. You're not doing that at all. You're just trying to understand. 
And, and I think this is where we get our empathy. And I, I think we're all empathetic, um, most of us, and in the community. And I think that we have a lot more in common with these people than we realize that they yeah. think, you know, and I, and I've been gullible and stupid and all sorts of believed all sorts of crazy things all my life, different things. And you come to understanding over time, why you make that error. Why is it that you went in that, that, that way? And I right. think we need to understand, and that woman is grieving. And like you said, she's, you know, if you're still seeking out a medium to find out if your son's okay, that's just, I don't know. It's just very sad. It's yeah. very sad. It, it is. It's heartbreaking. And, yeah. And uh, I, I understand. I can, I can relate. I, I know. It's what, painful. Kind of what they're going through. I mean, not totally because I, I haven't lost a, a child, so I don't know exactly what they're going through, but I can still empathize with them and I'm not there to crush their, 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 whole hope, idea yeah. or hope you know but i want to help them realize like you're not getting what you need here from this person right that you're not you're not um yeah i would and, love to go back and chat with that lady now yeah. and be like you know and but, the overall experience i'm, I'm sorry okay no, go ahead. Uh, the, like like you said keeping up the ruse is important because i mean when we talk about double blind studies and when you when you have people going in getting a placebo for a condition you don't want them to know because exactly you go in sometimes with this attitude like sometimes people want to tell you what they think you want to know so mm -hmm. if i go in there saying oh i'm a skeptic i'm investigating this they might change their behavior to tell me things they think i want to know rather than what i really want to know right right absolutely so. okay so we're going to take a quick break and after the break i definitely have to hear what other cosplay kenny has done <laughs> <laughs> i can show you pictures all right, so let's get into this show. What was that like? Uh, what was it like? It was Out, outside of the bar. You're now you walk into the bar. venue. What was it like? Describe it to us. So the, leaving the bar was definitely a downer. Um, that was a low point. <laughs> uh, <laughs> as we filtered for you, in, as Ed and Kimmy. Yes, um, for both of us. Yes, <laughs> we were very upset about that. Um, but as we went into the the, I guess you would call it an auditorium. Yeah. Um, or, or conference hall. Uh, one of the first things that, that I noticed was the uh, ratio from male to female. And I, out of a thousand people, because there were about a thousand seats and most of them were filled, um, I counted 12 males um, out of everything. And I was. I what? Was, out of a I thousand mean, people? Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm looking at the picture now. And let me, uh, let me show you. Let me show you that. Oh, my gosh. I didn't, I don't remember that. I know that it's almost all women, but yeah, you guys are taking lots of selfies. Look at that. Can you see that? Hey, oh, look at me. Let oh, me what see. happened? So yeah. that's what it looks like. So he had a top and a bottom. Are you seeing a picture? Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Because it's, it's coming over. So, here. yeah, this, all this um there was looking around nobody up top though it was no oh, that's empty up, seats yeah. up there yeah it was all yeah, empty it, yeah he has to be able to wander around but you fit a thousand people in there how much yeah. farther off to the right and the left do you think there is so uh our row was the last row on this we side were close to the end yeah but i mean and when you go through and you and count, count it yeah there's a thousand people there wow yeah and i mean you can see just from this picture it's females um and it, it's not a I, I can't say that it surprised me um because uh, i've just been to so many places like lily dale and other psychic events where this is the normal ratio even the psych the psychic fairs that we've been to um same thing the the it's a majority it's a female dominated majority uh kind of event so I have a uh, slide if you want to see it which actually has some stats on this that's it yeah, I, I've done this in my presentations on what's the harm of believing in psychics. So it breaks it up into number of women, number of men, and how much they're willing to spend in a year. And then I have the last column as a gender ratio. Wow. Wow. Yeah, that's that's big. Wow. I mean, e even at the low numbers, it's quite a large thing. Yeah. And you get and you up to people who are into it. Yeah, it's, 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 Susan, it's almost a thousand story. to one. Why? Why is that? I think women are just honestly I think we're just more spiritual per people 
I uh, that's. I don't have an answer. Emotion. I know. I just know that this is this More emotion. Is, maybe yeah. Don't know. Nurturing. We don't know. Nurturing that. Yeah. I mean, willing to willing to show our emotions. I mean, and also take into account that the twelve males that I counted included me and Jack Hit. <laughs> and, 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 two, and you had two so other people yeah. there and two, and two other males there so there's nine that weren't get, as far as you know no and the nine. other two you had two men in your group besides yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah so me me mike and then jack so the three of us so yeah only nine males that were actually there um and this is this is my speculation but i could see some of the faces like they were dragged there they were yeah. supporting their wives. Yeah. And, or or well, they showed up because they wanted to go to the casino for a while. Or maybe. They I, drove I her. Well, the one the one couple that he did pick on, um, they had lost their son. So I could see maybe why he was there. Right. You know, because probably for support for his wife. But you yeah, know. we don't yeah, we don't know. We didn't get to talk to them. Yeah. So I I mean we we wanted to we wanted to talk to everybody but unfortunately like as soon as the show was over and this is jumping ahead but as soon as the show was over everyone split oh, they were gone like they filed out really quick which I I was surprised about um because we hung around because we well, wanted they, to meet we wanted to meet Matt <laughs> people did get in his line because we yeah. did hold back because the lines were long and we didn't want to we wanted to make sure we got the chance to talk to him so we okay, wait. Wait, wait, wait. Don't get there yet. Okay. Yeah, so, okay. Right. so the venue is almost all female. Yes. Right. It's a thousand people all on the ground floor. He mingles amongst them. What was he wearing? He looks he um, Oh, he bedazzled the hell out of a suit jacket. Um, a sports coat. He had a black sports coat and it was sequenced. Sequenced. It was it was I have a picture of him. To the hill. Like um so here, oh, let me here share we this go. Again. Oh, it's perfect. Uh, so boom and sharing, like the watch and the ring. Can he, you see that? Yeah. Okay. He was so blinged out. So the whole front of his sports jacket is is all bedazzled, like literally bedazzled. And I don't know if it was like a flower thing or a peacock or something. Uh, no, there it was just rhinestone, like rhinestone. Yeah, all yeah. rhinestones. Um, crystals he really <laughs> has this huge gold watch and i mean it's it's huge it was so gaudy it was very bad and then this big diamond ring um that's here that it was just really big and and yeah i mean to me that was like all right you're 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 really gaudy really really gaudy i didn't like it at all like it's like you're flashing the money people are paying right in front of their right. faces I, th Sub I think it looks Mr. Hollywood like. Like Sub subsequent to this, yeah, subsequent yeah. to this, he became Mr. Hollywood, getting his own show. Does he dress like that on the show? I've not seen it. Oh yeah. my gosh! Yeah, I've seen. Well, you know what? The, <laughs> I the haven't show, watched the show. The series show we didn't watch, but the, I saw the commercials, and um, he's well the dressed. Commercial, the commercial was just so funny because, um, I think his sister was helping him get dressed, and he was putting on Spanx. And he was like, do I look fat? Do I look fat in this? Like, I was like, oh, my God, he's such a girl. <laughs> but I, you you can see it right in the outfit that he's wearing there that, I mean, he almost yeah. is like a girl. <laughs> <laughs> you said it, not me. <laughs> yeah, better done. A little me. flaunty. Let's just say that way. Flamboyant, maybe. <laughs> very flamboyantly. Very, very, very Hollywoody glamorous. Yeah. yeah. Mark says Liberace, but I, I yes, yeah, yeah, Liberace. That's perfect example. Yeah. Okay, so what did you think of him personally? Okay, take take it down. Um, I'm trying to, but I can't. Like all my controls are gone. I can't. I didn't touch sharing. anything. Is he still up on the screen? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I no. can't stop sharing. You can't, I can't sharing. stop sharing. It won't let me. All this I is, have a, is like a, a a song for the. Here. A song for the. Um... This is why I don't like Zoom. <laughs> you don't like Zoom. I don't like Zoom. It's it because it's done this before yes, where I can't. All I have is I can down? change or no because it'll just show the background because oh. it's just sharing the thing. I have no control over anything. That's now. really strange. Okay. Yeah, I have none either. So Susan, uh, for some reason, it just took, a, took away our co-host uh, privileges. You didn't have co-host privileges. There it goes. 
Hold on. It's it's host privilege. Let me give you host privilege. Okay. Got it. Are we back? That was weird. It was like Venus and Retro, or like he needed to stand, stay on the screen Maybe. longer. He Maybe he wanted to, wanted to be. Out. Okay. Right. So, so yeah, in, not in personally. Here, personally, I mean, we we. <sighs> I found him to be full of himself. Um, and I'm not just saying that because I don't like psychics. I just found him to be very full of himself and very showy. Um, it was it was nonstop. And during the show, I found him to be incredibly rude. Um, and uh, I did not like him. And if he spoke to me the way he spoke to some other people that he was reading, we would have issues, like major issues, um, because he just outright... if. If you did not confirm his prediction or what he was saying, he berated you. He 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 bothered you. He was like, "Come on, let's go." You know, you're you're not making connection, honey. Let's let's go. Well, let's uh, let's back up to how he did it, because like he he wouldn't uh, focus on just one person. He would make the whole row of people stand up, which yeah. I found was really odd. Uh, that was the first time I ever was at an event like that how many people were in the row that you're talking about well, mark wants to explain how that works so like we have we have and i'm oh gosh i'm gonna do this again hopefully it doesn't show it up but here i'm gonna share this picture um and this okay is there they are okay there's jack so that's yeah that's jack, jack on the end but this is the entire row he so made everybody stand up in that four, row like he five. walked down and he said somebody oh, here baby. come over here Wait and he what? would actually stand like he was coming up. He told this row to stand up. And I took where's a, Matt standing? Uh, Matt is right off camera on on the right because he was approaching the row. But he was approaching right. it. I my I took this picture pretty quick because Jack was standing up, and I wanted to get him in the picture. So <laughs> I snapped the picture really quick to get him in there. Um, but there's actually like oh, so here's a better picture. He's on the other side. And he's closer to the row. Oh, there's Mike. <laughs> there's Mike. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he would get to this the side here, and we have video of this, which is great because and, and I want to say this too. When we walked in, his mother, Matt Fraser's mother, is working the front desk, and we asked permission to take pictures, and she said, You can take pictures and video if you want. Right. And I was like, Awesome. Cool. That's awesome. So I took video of the whole thing, which is we sent to you guys. So you could watch and, and uh, Mark was watching this, but his basic technique was to come up to the the end of the row where he was almost lined up with you like this um, and look at the row and just start putting out general uh, statements until somebody started shaking their head. And then Mark picked out something. Um, Mark, techniques. Mark, where'd you go? I'm right here. Well, <laughs> well Mark want, wandered off. I don't know why he wandered off. To... Yeah, can you move the uh, unscreen share so Mark can show? Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Can I sit Maybe. here? No. Here we go. I want to sit here. <laughs> <laughs> He's taking He's over. Like, Get out. He always tries to marginalize me. You know, you can be over in the corner. No. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, so this is one of the things I noticed that I thought, uh, hey, I'm going to use this if I if I ever get a chance to, because to me, it was just so glaringly obvious. And uh, I, I really like that. And I have to say, yeah, he was arrogant. He was over the top. But I thought of, of all the cold readers I've seen, he was probably the best. And you've seen <laughs> Yeah, Same. and I saw him in person. We paid the big bucks and went and saw him. And, uh, you know, he just was nonstop. He didn't take no for an answer. Yeah. He barreled through people, you know, but right. but it was like, he's not hot reading. I didn't, we didn't, the second time, we, uh, Susan saw him for the second time. I didn't think he was hot reading. But anyway, so one of the methods that he used is, uh, I hadn't seen it before, but yeah, you have a whole row stand up and then you stand, the medium stands about maybe three feet in front of their faces so he can see the whole row. Mm -hmm. And then he's basically using the, the- Off to the side, like this. Off to the side. He's using the, the, the law of large numbers, only he's paring it down a little bit. And what he does is he will say, 
I'm getting an image of of a, a toothbrush. Does that mean anything to anybody? And then he just immediately looks at everybody's faces all at once mm -hmm. as a group. And if he sees any sort of reaction to that, then he immediately picks his finger up and points to that person. <laughs> and it looks like, you know, he just said, it, it's like a split second thing that he, he looks for an expression. And then as soon as he sees it, he chooses that person out and he says, that's you, right? And the person says, yes. So it, to the rest of the audience, it looks like, wow, how did he do that? Mm -hmm. But it's just it's just an extension of looking looking for tells on a person when you do a one-on-one -on -one reading. Right. Explain from how, how the hand works, like to the side. Can you explain that better? What do you mean the hand? Well, because he's standing at he's standing at an angle from the person. Yeah, he's sitting at like a forty five degree so angle. That, if you're like this and your hand is up and your people, all the people are over here, and if you're standing like this to a, a group of ten people, if there's ten people in front of you right now, right? Yeah. And I lift up my hand, and the person over here is the one who makes the the face. Yeah, he just moves his hand over. Okay, but then you see the you see the large thing of the hand moving. But if I'm movie, standing yeah. over here and and the group of people is on an angle at an angle to me and I lift up my hand, then if the person at the very end of the row is the one that's got the reaction, my hand moves very little. It's a smaller angle change if you're calling yeah. you. And yeah. so so to the point. audience, it looks or to the people who are who are being read, they think. Are you pointing to me or are you pointing or, to the person on, next to me on video? Yeah. They, yeah. But if you're here. And the person, and there's ten people in front of me. Then my arm moves farther. It, if it's more visual, that is that, is that clear? Or did we just model that completely? <laughs> no, I get it. It, yeah, you, but it? You, ba you basically stand close to in line with the line of people, and therefore, yes. when you're pointing at the line, your hand only moves a little bit, mm -hmm. no yeah. matter who raises their hand right, or right. makes a face. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So you're but at, you're yeah, at an the, angle. The only the angle that is that is to be focused on just has to include all of their faces or their bot the front of their bodies mm -hmm. because that's where people react that's body language so i gave him a plus for that and i said okay <laughs> you know he's still a terrible fraud but let me make a note of this he's a fraud who knows what he's doing yeah, i'm glad that you were able to pick that out too yeah. yeah i mean i could be totally wrong maybe he wasn't doing that and he was just a good guesser but i tend to think that these people get methods and they stay with them because they find out that they work, you know? So well, yeah, I mean, it. but being a good guesser is easier when you have a group of people rather than one person you're guessing with. And yeah, yeah he's giving right. himself a big group of people yeah, where he can so. keep an eye shot and easily point to like he knew it all along. Yeah. yeah. All right. I hope that Thank helps. you, Mark. Thank so you. that's something and, and, Mark picked and, up on looking at the videos. And then when we went to go see Matt in person, he confirmed it, but he stands at an angle. So he did that at your show too? Like he picked mm -hmm. the whole row? everybody in the road 10 people stand up and they look okay. like they're far apart from each other right but where the psychic standing mm -hmm. to the side or so, so from when mark was saying he's not seen any other of these psychics do that in person that's interesting yeah no i've never seen any other psychic do that he i have learned it somewhere he learned it and it's working and that's that's his method mm -hmm. so i don't know it's really so what that means and I've heard this on other interviews with Matt Fraser, you like recordings and things. I've heard people saying they're standing up, right? And mm -hmm. they'll say, Are you talking to me? Yeah. Right. They can't tell because right. the angle that the, the psychic's at, they can't tell if they're talking to me or if they're talking to the person next to them just because. But if I'm standing straight on, I can, you yeah. can tell who you're pointing at. It's easy, but not from an angle. And right. even in the picture that we have that Kenny took, you can see other people looking at the other lady. Like, is he talking to you? Like, because people are turning. Yeah, their heads. yeah they did that. They, yeah, they were like, "Who? Wait, me? Yeah." yeah. So yeah, it was like, brilliant. Sure. The Mark picked up on. I would never have picked up on. This is why you want to have magicians and stuff like that, and exactly and involved in this world because we all bring different things to the community of why why is it they're doing this because right. it's usually a method to it and we just don't know what it is yet it's can, can, can i pick up on something kenny said about him being like brusque and kenny would have had words yeah so the other the psychic i've seen uh you know videos of that has done that to the point where it's noticeable is uh john edward 
right? And they even made the one episode called uh, The Biggest Douche in the Universe. Because you in videos, that's what John Edward does, right? If people disagree with him, he will attack them. And apparently, because John Edwards is a successful, that's a successful tactic in some cases, at least. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what happens when you have the power of the rude. microphone? Thomas is so What did you say, Kenny? When you have the power of the microphone, you know, you get to do whatever you want. And uh, he's already got his money. Oh, yeah. Teacher, you know, and, and it's expected. Sylvia Brown was nasty. Oh, Mark is saying Sylvia Brown was nasty with me. Oh, she was a bitch. I hated her. Yeah, she was something else. She was just, and then I, and, uh, Chip Chip Coffee, I, I've just re-listened to a whole bunch of audio of him. And he's always saying, Who are you gonna trust? You were I'm the psychic, you know. I'm like, <laughs> wow. He says, I'm psychic and shit. That's the street. That's, and everybody that's laughs. Easy. Wow. He says, he's like, well, Who are you gonna believe? I'm you the psychic. Anyone else. <laughs> <laughs> but you, but yeah, they're anyone. really rude. It's like yeah. yeah. Rude. Okay, so go on about Matt Fraser. You found him to be I when I saw him in person, I found him to be one of the best cold readers I've ever seen. Yeah. In person. He Absolutely. was smooth, he was charismatic. He'd be like, he'd get the family all together and he's got the bunch together and they're just crying. And he'll go, and your loved one's telling me he wants you to me to give you a hug. Can I give you a hug? And they're like, Yes. And everybody hugs and the <laughs> tears and people in the audience are crying. He's really a emotional, physical, very mm -hmm. physical with people. Yeah. Very, very emotional, charismatic. Yeah. I mean, he did make use of it. He he does talk fast. He talks a lot. High um, energy. Yeah. Yeah. He doesn't mm -hmm. give you a chance to really think. I mean, if you think too long and there's dead air, he moves it along. He wants, all right, let's, let, let's try this. Let's try that. And he asked another question. Um, and there was a lot of, there was a quite a few times. I think I, I was like, he just, he just got the answer and he's regurgitating um, because he, that's what he does. He asks questions. Once he gets information, like two questions later, he brings up the information that he already learned from the sitter yep. and he regurgitates it and he keeps going through that. So you don't really have a chance when you're in that moment, when you're the sitter and you're trying to pay attention to what he's saying, you immediately forget what he said two questions ago right? and what you said. And we've seen, we've seen dozens and dozens, right. thousands of examples of that. Um, the, uh, the uh, confirmation bias that goes on here, but yeah, people weren't, they were trying to live in the moment to try to answer the question because you're in that high stress situation because he's constantly pressuring. Member, heck yeah. Yeah, he's hounding you with information or questions. And when you don't give him the right answer, then he gets mean. Uh, and, and now you're you're sitting there embarrassed because there's a thousand other pairs of eyes on you. You better start and, agreeing. Yeah. And you you start agreeing um, or you're you're stumbling and it makes it worse. So, yeah, overall, I mean, he's a good cold reader. He's, he, he really is good. He has people, especially when people already believe that he can do what he claims to do. Um, there's very little in the way of, of, of evidence that has to be presented. They just believe. Um, so he's good with that. He's charismatic. He he does have that stage presence. Um, he does. Um, he He's very vocal and very easy to mingle with the crowd um, because he knows he has control. He has that microphone. And very that's, confident. that's the, that's mm -hmm. the, yeah, the speaker stick. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's very confident with it. Um, and uh, but yeah, once once you see where he was making mistakes and once I mean, if you're familiar with cold reading, you pick it up almost immediately. And that was from the start. And even like when when it was over and Jack hit came up to us, like his first thing, the first sentence was, yeah, he's a cold reader. <laughs> and I, I was like, yep. <laughs> you know what? Also about with the angle and stuff where where he's having a row of 10 people stand up. It's odd. You know, why would you. Why would why would ten people standing up? Why would that row have more energy than you right. know? If you're yeah. talking about like somebody, I've heard him say um, something about a burning building, and the people had to get out. And you know, he has the ten people stand up, and he says, "I'm getting something about a burning building and and people, you know, smoke in the room and stuff." Why why that ten? You know, you think about it. Why would that ten people? Right. It just seems Maybe like if you're going to get a section, you would get a section. Exactly. Not, like, not a long it. row of people. That's exactly. a weird thing. It is weird. And, but what he'll do is 
if those 10 people stand up and a person right in front of those 10 people or right directly behind where it looks like he's pointing goes, oh, yes, he's going to say, all right, you 10 people sit down. I, I actually need to talk to this person who's oh, behind. Did that happen, mm-hmm. actually? I think oh, it, it happens. I think, I think it that. did happen. It's called, I, Mark show. says, it's called piggybacking. Each psychic has a different way of What's phrase. What's the other method? They, or the other hop, word? skip, and jump is yeah, what some say uh, Teresa Caputo uses. I'm going to do this. Oh, and, I hop, skip, and jump. I'm yeah. So oh, <laughs> because, because they'll say, oh, it was, it was the person behind you. It was a person beside <laughs> you. It was a person... Oh, now your dead person's moved. Oh, it's somebody else. They're interfering. Right. You know, it's it's this thing, but he's looking for a reaction. And if if somebody goes like this, and that's what we did with Chip uh, Coffee, is when he said something, we just were like, like this, very sudden, and the, his eye goes right to you, and he's like, ah, yeah. there it is. There's that's the funny. person I want to call on. That that method, I mean, ultimately shows that you don't know what you're doing because you picked up right. the wrong row. <laughs> Like yeah, you, and you just had a whole row it. of people yeah why would you have a row of people well, 10 people stand up unless you're going to use the method we just it did good. it mm-hmm. looks good you know don't it doesn't look like he did the right thing but he saved himself because he found the right person yeah he, he saved yeah. himself right yeah so so okay so jack Hitt gets picked up in this t- row of 10 and in the new york times article that is in the description you could read after this if you want you guys as well as Kenny's article about this, what Jack has some has some words that he says about being called. He didn't want to be called on one thing. He's like, oh, yeah, I think he was the only one in our group that didn't want to be called. <laughs> <It's> like, oh <laughs> yeah. Well, he's yeah. supposed to be. He's supposed to be a reporter. He's supposed right. to. He, he I heard. You, I heard you wanted him to wear a blue wig too, but he refused. Right. <laughs> so why did? Why did? Can somebody say why Donna was wearing a blue wig? It was to stand out. I mean, you you had gotten into because there there was a couple things that we used it for. Um, we used it in Lilydale. Um, she she wore a blue wig um, and got picked by a visiting psychic that totally screwed up the reading. Like totally, we won't get into that. Bad. Um, but it was bad, like bad enough that we left. Um, but it was really bad, and it just it's something that stands out. You see, I mean, in a sea of blonde. Uh, brunettes and, and gray silver gray yeah this this neon blue wig stands out um it and was, it just draws your eye to it yeah i mean it was something that i had um when i was going through my cancer treatments and uh it just continued that's all we just you know it was fun and it shows a fun person yeah somebody who's going to play along yeah uh you know it's got a lot to say and plus we're in a big room. We wanted to make sure that somehow you guys stood out. So whenever your pictures are appearing on the Facebook pages, you can find us. <laughs> they'll, they'll say, oh, it's the lady with the blue wig. Where is she? Where is she in this audience? Where is she? Right. She's right. with that guy. There's a guy. There's a whole group of them that and we've got their whole Facebooks, you know, right mm-hmm. here in front of us. Who do we go to? Right. So yeah, it's it's important to have something like that. I guess we can't use a blue wig again. I know. <laughs> oh, That's well, all right. We'll find a different color. Oh, well, you know, they're all in competition with each other. They probably don't talk much. So <laughs> well, I know Thomas is watching this right now. Hey, Thomas. Hi. Hi. Watching. Hi, sweetie. Challenge is still up, TJ. If you want to <laughs> set up a test, I'll be happy to do it. <laughs> he doesn't want to have a test. That's the last thing he wants. Two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. You wouldn't have five hundred thousand. Your... Five hundred thousand. Five hundred thousand. Oh, updated. he doesn't need it. He doesn't need it. Right. Yeah, he's right. conning enough people. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't need it. Trust me. So we'll. So okay. So going through the whole thing, he gave a whole bunch of readings to a lot of different people. Right at the event, mm-hmm. he did not call in Jack Hit. Jack Hit just stood up. Yeah. Right. It. Yeah. Him, but he didn't get called on. So. So did, so, so, so did, <laughs> Matt, did Matt make anything of that row that Jack was in at all? Do you recall? I, I say. Okay, Mark says he has something to say. I just want to say that if Jack did not want to be read, then we have to give credit to uh, the psychic for picking that up. By <laughs> right, not- <laughs> right. <laughs> by not, yeah. All right. So stay, stay yeah, off okay. camera there, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> what, what did you guys think about? Did he get readings that seemed like they hit to the person who's getting the reading? I think I think he did a good a good enough job that he's going to have people pay for more sessions. Yeah. Yeah. 
yeah, and that's the sad believed. part. They yeah. Got oh yeah. Started. Oh yeah. Definitely. I mean, there were some things like something I brought up earlier was um, well before the show. Uh, he had brought up with an with a an older couple um, about pitching pennies, um, something about pennies. And I mean, I grew up with that. I grew up with that little game, and and pennies were always a big deal. Um, so this is these are old traditions that are still still work. Um, so you can bring something up like that. And butterflies, I think butterflies were mentioned. Oh my God, those are the biggest bottom. tropes: coins, butterflies, yeah. music, a rose. So yeah, he. I mean, he, he nice. used these, and it did get reactions. Um, and I think there was one. I, and I for, I forget it's been a while I didn't watch the video yeah we should have um, watched it should have watched it last night that's right that's um, right but he I think he brought up something and it it was a total miss and I and I and again this is just trying to remember I I think he blamed the people for not remembering because then later on in the conversation they were like oh we might have done it at one point and he's like well see I told you I told you, I knew that and uh, yeah it's so. Yeah, from a believer's standpoint, from from the people that were sitting there, yeah, I, I agree. There, yeah. there were a few that they bought into it. They helped the narrative um, and filled in a lot of blanks. And, and, and I don't want to sound mean with that, but they that's what I was seeing. Like questions were asked, general questions, or, you know, kind of not specific, but I'm seeing a father figure. And again, we we've gone over this, but when you say that, kind of thing that could mean father or someone that was like a father Grandpa. or a grandfather you know but if you hit on someone that did have their father pass away and that's why they're there that seems like a direct hit even though you're saying father figure right you're not hearing father figure you're hearing father father because that's father. who i want to reach out to that's my dad you know yeah. right so look it, immediately it's like oh yes yeah, my dad my yeah. father yeah. I'm looking at the New York Times article from Jack Hitt, and he, it was the Valley Forge Casino and the King of Prussia. Yes. That's where yeah. it was. And um, he says that Frazier walked down the aisle and straight up to my row, right off, he said he had a vision and asked the dozen of us to stand. I was momentarily terrified, not only he because... Was prepared nothing but because if he'd asked me why i was there i would feel obligated to tell him and i was there to observe a secret sting operation <laughs> wow <laughs> you would think you would think you would think that matt fraser would have caught on that six people seven people were there that we know of um matt said i mean uh um uh, jack jack hit says the crowd was older he easily were, divined yeah. that the very likely fact that someone's mother on the row had passed, he quickly identified, no kidding, he quickly identified a woman near me and land, handed her a microphone. Your mom is acknowledging that I have to speak to my daughter, he said, and then let the woman know that mom was okay in the afterlife. Your mother says she wants you to know that she loves and cares about you. That's classic cold reading, all generalized notions, searching for something slightly more specific to move to. Mm -hmm. He nodded his head as if to nudge her to go along. Your mom tells me that she was angry before she left this world, and you don't want to talk about that. Then he stepped back, held her gaze, and encouraged her. You understand that, right? Mm -hmm. She agreed. As he teased the story along, Frazier might oddly crack a joke to ease the tension, but then take the room right back to this quiet place. And Fraser says, I need to apologize to my daughter because every day she deals with the stress and the burdens. And suddenly the real sorrow of the stranger's loss was there near me on my row. This is why Matt, uh, Jack Hitt writes for New York Times and not me. He's It's eloquent the way he's. Yes. Mm -hmm. but I hope you guys all, everybody watching, I hope you read this article. It's really personal. And he says, and all of a sudden, the whole room feels it. And mm -hmm. he says, and he says, I, Jack Hitt, could barely look up. This little moment was so intimate and private. Grief is one of those emotions that doesn't happen publicly too often. And when it does, the mood easily dominates the room. And so, so Matt was, I mean, Jack Hitt goes on to talk about how, as he was attending the event, he felt very like he was remembering about when his father died and how he was told his father had died because he had died when he was like 10 and he, and the motions and all that. So um, Matt Frazier recently was on a show 
or some newspaper article or something. And they asked him about this New York Times article. And he says, yeah, even the reporter who attended the New York Times uh, article endorsed me. <laughs> I'm like, what did you read? But then, he, but Matt can throw that kind of stuff out there because Matt's not going to be factual. He's just saying that. Yeah. Because he knows nobody's going to go back and read the article and see what right. Jack had actually right. said, even right. though in the article that Matt's saying this, they do link to the New York Times article, but they know nobody's going to read it or read through right. it. Yeah. No way did Jack endorse him. Jack was just saying that that this is an emotional place. And when you're there, even though you know that the guy that is doing this is cold reading, you still feel that mood and how everybody yeah. around him is feeling just it's, it's so, you know what manipulated it's, personal yeah it's when you it's it's when you're watching like a like a movie or something and you're at a, at a theater and there's a sad part mm -hmm. you hear the crowd go oh yeah, yeah everybody like there what bambi's empathy, mom gets yeah. yeah oh yeah mark pulls up mark just said it's like when bambi's mom gets killed i yeah. know well that's, go, that's traumatic well, I've, I've never seen bambi is that a spoiler oh you need to watch Bambi. I think he's Rob. teasing. I think he's teasing. Of course, Rob's watched Bambi, haven't you? Or Dumbo. Dumbo? Oh my God, oh. that's another one where you want to cry. You know it's not a flying elephant, my God. <laughs> <laughs> a talking flying elephant. You well, know a flying that. elephant. It's just, not, just it's, it's just not the uh, magic uh, thing he has. You still feel the emotion. That's the key. Well, you do, and, and and you're in a room full of people that are there to connect with somebody so you add that on top of everything else and you know it is going to be a very emotional event and he does you know crack jokes to to lighten it up because he feels it too you know and, and he knows he's conning people so he has to lighten the mood well, that, that's that's a good question does he know it yeah that's a good oh, question. I, I've got, I mean, unlike a hot reader who you know they know it. Like no, he's hot Thomas read. John. I've, I've got a video on him hot reading. He hot reads. Matt Fraser? Yeah, I've got a video of him where he got on a TV show with um, a reporter, and he had her, I counted how many seconds, 15 seconds to get her in tears. Immediately saw her father or grandfather behind her. Same things he pulled off her Instagram page. I, I showed the picture. So I have the video, wow. and I have the... I have the uh I had an article on it and I have a video. Oh yeah, he'll hot read. Mm -hmm. If given if given the opportunity and he doesn't think he's gonna get caught, he's gonna hot read. So yeah, yeah, of course he knows he's he knows he's not real. You can't think he's really thinks he's speaking to the dead. With that suit. But then people, Mark says with that suit on I do think that that is the case for all sorts of psychological reasons, though. No, I don't think so. What do you guys think? I don't for, no, for with Matt, no, I don't think he believes what he's doing. I think he un, he well, knows. He can make a lot of money. That's what he. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's that's what he's counting on, and I mean we see that with the the fame. I mean, it's almost like I want to liken it to like televangelists. You yeah. know, like they know what they're doing and they flaunt it. You see them in expensive yes. clothing with jewelry, with big watches and gaudy outfits and stuff. We see that they flaunt it, but mm -hmm. they know what they're doing, and they think, "I." Uh, and, and I'm again, I'm speculating here, but I think you get that mentality where you're untouchable. Like I'm on stage, I have the microphone, I'm making money. People believe me, they adore me, and I can say whatever I want and get away with it. I can go on national television and say, "Oh yeah, that New York Times reporter, he endorsed me." Yeah, and you're nobody. Nobody bats an eye. My fans will continue to believe. Yeah, people will continue to do it. So do I believe that he knows what he's doing? Yeah. He does. Yeah, he absolutely does. He has and a he good racket. He sucked going. everybody in there to either come back to another show or buy a book or the people we talked something. to in the beginning. The the yeah. mother daughter. I mean, they had been mul multiple shows hoping to get a reading. And I'm sure they're gonna continue mm -hmm. until they do. And especially when they do, because Sadly, I think that's going to cause an, a, a slight addiction because you get that one message. It's going to bring you that that moment of peace and joy where you think you're getting a message from your 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 child. And after a month or two, it's going to fade and you're going to want it again. And they're going to look for another show and then mm -hmm. show up and hopefully like, oh, I, I was read before. 
and give me another message and you get that yeah, and that's hot picture. rating yeah. if they recognize you so going on with the show because we're getting really depressing <laughs> i'm sorry thanks i'm depressed now <laughs> i'll have to have some pizza after um what was i think i have some milk dead somewhere that'll make that'll bring my mood down <laughs> so what do you what ends up happening so those people who left that building are going to leave feeling touched or or in feeling good about life or whatever because death is just around the corner and it's not a big deal we still were in contact with our family members you know that kind of feeling people say that that's healthy that they think that that's good if they feel good about it why you know you're manipulated <laughs> that's not good you're dependent on on this this feeling like you said so what ends up happening at the end so he didn't call on any of you guys. Spoiler no. alert. It's already yeah. an hour into this. We didn't get didn't call on anybody. Um, but we did wait around. We waited around until everyone was done because there was a line to see him. He was autographing his his book. Which that he was, was selling. I must. Yeah, yeah he was right. selling this. And I must say that I did read it um, because I wanted to give a thorough uh, uh, investigation. The secrets uh, of unlocking this, your psychic abilities. Yes. Oh, um, did you learn? I, I did not. I learned that he needs an editor. Um, there's a lot of gramming, grammar and spelling mistakes um, mm. that went through. And I that that annoyed me. Um, just because, mm. how, how many times Radford edits my stuff? <laughs> I'm like, you need an editor. Damn it. Um, More than your mom. Yeah, but I didn't I didn't learn anything. Or from your him. mom. Um, and I, I mean, just overall talking to him we we stayed in character you know mm -hmm. and we, we told him we were all from out of town and we came in a family reunion so your event got us all together and he bought it all he was mm -hmm. overjoyed oh i'm so happy that i could do this for you and this and let's that. get and a picture i think his yeah. mom took the picture his mom <laughs> took the picture of us um and not not at any point did he say something like you know this is something's off you know or I don't, I don't really feel comfortable with you people. And again, he signed our, he autographed our book with both of our, yeah. our OD names. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And maybe, maybe that's not how psychics are supposed to work. Or maybe he was just tired out. It'd been a couple hours. He could have been drained. Oh, it, it, it was a long show. It could have been drained. When you're, when you're, when you're <laughs> swindling people, I mean, it takes a lot out of you. I get it. I understand. Mark says, don't make excuses for him, Susan. <laughs> <laughs> and he probably had another show in another hour so you know the thought about it is is that kenny look at who you are and you are standing there like two seconds away from him like right here yeah you would think i would i would expect something and you know you, and from your, if, so if there's energy saying, around him Susan, a person what we're really saying is he's the exact opposite of a psychic He's exact. He says he's saying he's the exact opposite. He didn't have a glimmer of a of a yeah. vibration. Yeah, or anything. he had nothing. Like Not his, only it's just you, his, Kenny Biddle, who's been writing about this for years and involved in this, but Donna, who's been involved in this for years, and four other people, and you're all gathered in this clump of people around him. How in the world could he not have? felt something the money who paid for this came from freaking the james randy educational foundation <laughs> james randy himself they gave me the money to buy these tickets how Fine. how almost how like would you not know and i'm right there on the other end powers at all it's almost he, like I, I would i would assume that his his spirit guides or whatever loved ones from his family that have passed on should be screaming at him going hey don't trust these people get away from them run don't, away Susan, by talking about this though you're assuming that there is enough that there is such a thing to serve for you yes guys gonna let yes. go of that no yeah. well I'm, I'm, just, I'm just being the devil's advocate here of like you know if he was psychic it'd be if he was psychic he would be have his brain wired up he'd be in the CIA headquarters at the yeah, at a point. That's true. Yeah. Okay, so so you guys leave. Yes. Jack didn't talk to him or get a picture with him or anything like that. No. You no. probably went and had a nice he big stayed, drink. Yeah, he stayed <laughs> at, at, uh, out in the in the he stayed off camera, like out of out of the way. He's just observing. That's what his job was. Um 
but yeah, we left. Uh, we went out in the parking lot. We talked a little bit for everybody. We were in the lobby for a little bit. We talked, um, but that was it. I mean, pretty much everyone was gone um, by the time we got our time with Matt. Right. And uh, that was it. Like they packed up. It was only him and his mom. So they packed up the 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 few books that were left and folded up the table and boom, they were out. How much were the books? Oh, I don't know. Ten? $15. Oh, $17. It says sixteen ninety five on the back. It was probably a show steal, 15 bucks or something. Yeah, because you got, I think you ordered one, right? Didn't you order I one? I got, I had a book because we had two books, I think. Yeah, we still have, we have another so How much? How much money do you think he made in book sales a day? If they're $15 a pop. Oh, I have no idea. Um, I don't know how many books were there. I don't know how many people, people already had them, them before but, yeah. the show and then going up afterwards. So he may he, he probably made a good good couple of dollars um from that, but I, I can't be sure. I don't And then a thousand people paying what sixty dollars a person or something. Yeah, he had a ridiculous. good day. Yeah. He had a really good day, you know. And all he has to do is just be himself and wear his shiny stuff and yeah. Yeah. pay for his mom. Yeah, I'm sure they had a nice dinner that night. I'm sorry. I, that that it makes me laugh every time. Like, <laughs> go to the front desk. That's my mom. <laughs> Mark you says know. they went to Red, Red Lobster after. So I don't know why. Okay, so here's in the family. <laughs> now, here's the other thing. Another reason why you're staying in character is you do not know what is on your Facebook pages. Right. So right. you don't know if another person in that building got your reading. Right. Because especially like there was another woman in your group that sat a little bit apart from you guys. Mm -hmm. yeah. So her her reading that was gotten on Facebook could have actually been given to a woman or he could have attempted to give the reading to another person. And that was like, oh, no, I'm not quite, you know, I'm not quite hitting. So we don't know until we review the tape if maybe that. If he picked up on somebody else. Yeah. Or... And he tried to give the, re he confused one person with another person and right, right. not you two, because you guys were very distinctive looking, but if there had been somebody else that might have been like Mike's reading might've been given right. a person three rows Be behind. Back. So we had to review everything. And that's what the team does is they have to know. Are we at two hours yet? <laughs> <laughs> your producer's like come on wrap it up woman <laughs> if people are still watching they're watching because this is interesting so thank you guys so uh, yeah mark it so, actually gave me an idea like uh, the, the, if we do this again especially uh concerning matt um if we do this again uh, a rule of thumb would be not to have everyone sit in the same row but to have them go up in, in a column instead that way it gives a better chance You're in one of that group of 10 of somebody that gets picked like yeah because now up. that we know that he does rows right we could all sit in a different row yeah but the but the other problem with that is it, it was a lot of time and effort to make these pages and if he in fact doesn't generally do hot readings he there's doesn't. almost no point in it if he's just doing cold readings yeah right. he's mostly a cold yeah. reader that's right. all he does i i mean I've, unless he's on television i've caught him hot mm -hmm. reading yeah on television we don't know he could have one or two people in there it could be a plant or if know. he's doing a private show or something, yeah. Yeah, like yeah so definitely. Reading. Matt Frazier is not the one to be. Do he's more interesting to understand the cold reading tactics from, and just the methods, yeah. but not I think necessarily. It's a, safer bet. it's a safe bet for him because when you have people like TJ that that goes. Oh yeah, hot, hot read, read. It. hot read. You're hot red. You're hot red. Yeah. <laughs> so doesn't even look, hide it anymore. So, so you guys get on Skype with me again and other people. Were you there at the after after party, Rob, to to post mortem to see how it went? I don't recall. We, I, I, I'm pretty sure I recorded, you were. I recorded that. I think, yeah, I think we had lunch afterwards. We all went back and we yeah we had had we had lunch. lunch. And, and then Jack yeah. was at your house again. Yeah, we had to find out what happened because right. we're in we're in the dark. All we know is text messages from you guys saying, "I remember reading the Facebook page saying, okay, they're in.'" Right. Yeah. Here's the pictures they're sending us, and then the pictures we would put them up on the Facebook pages, and then all I got was quiet for an hour or more, and then it was like, okay, we didn't get read. Right. And that was we're like, oh man, I know. I was so bummed out. I was and so then and out. then we get out from there. 
uh, then we had the Skype reading to to learn what actually happened. And that was really interesting. Yeah. And then um takes a while for um the article from the New York Times to come out. It took forever. Yes. <sighs> I had to, I had to really or... prod, but it did. It finally came out. <laughs> but tell me what okay, so we should get closer to ending this, I guess. Yeah. What <laughs> Mark <laughs> wants to at say something. End. No, at the end. Okay, Mark wants to say not something. at the absolute end, you know. But... <laughs> I, 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 I want to stress I want... the positive aspect. Well, yeah, I'm gonna yes. ask what we thought. So I want to point out, by the way, that on the Wikipedia page for Matt Fraser, there is a subsection called Operation Peach Pit, and it has two references. One is the Jack Hit article, and the other one is Kenny Biddle's article, so people can go there and read it. I'm a little disappointed in that the last sentence of that section says, as Biddle reported in Skeptical Inquirer, none of the team members were selected for a reading. It doesn't say that, you know, all the other stuff. It was clear he was doing cold reading. We went to his private session. He didn't detect us. That could be there too. I think somebody should put that there. Just saying. Okay, just saying. <laughs> but it will not be you or I because will not we be definitely you or I. have a conflict of interest in this matter. Yeah. All right, now here's the important part. I will go last. What is it you guys think? Was it a win? What What did you think of it overall? Let, let me start since I'm the least involved. Uh, and I'll, again, I'm going to read from the lead of Matt Fraser's uh, Wikipedia article. It's the se second sentence after it describes who he is. Fraser was targeted in the unsuccessful sting known as Operation Peach Pit reported on in the New York Times. So that's, that's disappointing seeing it from that perspective. But uh, let's hear what you guys say. Do you want to go first? I don't, I don't think it was unsuccessful. I mean, because if if you go back and like like you guys did, you went back and watched the videos and everything like, you know, Mark picked up on some of the things that he does, you know, and and how he, um, I guess, deflects, I guess, oh, information you. from people and, you know, how he jokes about stuff. Like, I think that's in, that was important in like the part of the sting you know like yeah we were bummed that he didn't pick on us but i think that i wouldn't call it unsuccessful yeah it was i i it, it was uns unsuccessful in the fact that we did not catch him hot reading right which was the point of the whole exercise which i get i understand that and that's fair because we didn't catch him hot reading um, but otherwise, we were able to get some more information. We were able to see and observe that he was cold reading. Um, we have video of the entire thing so we can demonstrate, hey, you know, <laughs> he's asking a lot of questions. He's not giving specific information. He's asking questions and he's building upon what he's told by the sitter. Yeah. So he's cold reading. And and even at the end, when he when he signed our book. He didn't oh, catch it. He didn't um, catch it at all. So. So I, I see it as, as still it was successful for us. I mean, it wasn't a big W. It was right. just it was a small W um, or or you can even say it was neutral because we already figured he was cold reading um, at some point, but we didn't catch him hot reading. So, I mean, I, I, I'm glad for the experience because I got to see it firsthand. I got to go for free <laughs> um, <laughs> and and see this and see how he works and see and get his mannerisms, get that video, um, understand a new uh, tactic that Mark pointed out about the row um, coming up and pointing mm -hmm. at him. I mean, that was great. I didn't, I didn't pick that up. I was just going like, he's just picking a whole row and just throwing shit out there to see what sticks, you know, that's how I saw it. But I didn't realize, you know, like pointing the fingers that that makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. And that's something that we're going to look for um, in, in the future. So I don't think it was a, a failure. Yeah, but overall, I think it was a good experience. Mm -hmm. Mark, you want to say? Yeah. From here, or do you want me to come stand here? Stand I don't feel like come on, you. come on in, <laughs> Mark. Every woman Mark. has a, a man standing behind her. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. So I think <laughs> that anytime we can do something like this and get one thing, then it's successful. What do you want? Right. Yeah. You know? right. I, I agree. Mean, there, there's an old thing I learned in magic. Uh, there, there's thousands of magic books and people used to say to me when I was starting in magic, they say, if you get one thing out of reading a whole magic book or any book, 
then it's worth reading. Right. So, I, and, and in this case, yes, I did pick up something. I'm not sure I'll use it, but it's nice to have in my little toolkit mm -hmm. and try it. If it doesn't work, who, who cares? You're still going to have a backup and you'll just keep going until you get something you want. So, so I appreciated that part of it. And the idea that the more we do this, the more we'll be conversant with how things work and we can dig deeper and deeper and deeper. And finally, we're going to hit gold. And hopefully that right. somebody who causes some great harm or something so that they can be prosecuted, you know, because it's not entertainment to me. It is it is it is blatant criminality of the worst kind. So. Yeah. That me if that when if, if we can keep digging and pitching and pitching and pitching and something comes up that allows us to just cross that threshold, then it's all worth it. I I'm agree. Done. Thank you. <laughs> Speaking of someone being indicted, in uh, Susan's previous video with the woman who is the grief counselor, she mentioned that a, a psychic told somebody that their uh, partner was cheating on them, and he went and killed them. Is that not go. prosecutable? That's Perry know. Mason territory there. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know enough about I don't know anything other than what she said, but I, I would think the media would have picked up on that story, but she hmm. But they can't blame the medium for that. They can only blame the murderer for that. No, I, I don't I don't I don't know if that's true. It depends and you know that could be manslaughter that you caused it to happen. At least that's it should true. be public knowledge and like yeah. shame anyway, that that's, medium. That's what we're aiming for. Yeah. Right. So here's my thoughts. I think, think it was highly successful because when I came into Operation Peach Pit, I had no intention of that we were going to catch him in a hot raid. I knew the odds were astronomical because he's not a hot reader normally, because you're in a large room of people, because that just wasn't going to happen. So I, mm -hmm. I already knew the goal, the entire goal for Operation Peach Pit was to show Jack Hit how to do a sting, how it happens, how it's planned, what the background looks like, how do people create these Facebook pages, which took forever. And it was excruciating detail for the work that Rob and the other people put into it. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of work. And he was able to watch that in real time. And that was the only reason why I put Operation Peach Pit on is to show him how to do it. And it got us this New York Times Magazine article, which was massive and it still right. is it's it's like this is like gold standard stuff and it was it was life-changing in a lot of ways and i think matt fraser says it got made him famous and i know that's and it got him a tv show which i know that's not true because i think they were already in talks with getting a show and yeah, a but i think that what it did is it um it just put him in our in our path, all of a sudden, we're like, you know, I didn't know who Matt Frazier was. Right. Yeah, I didn't either. And so it now it made him one of our targets. We've learned tons about him. Look, we've just been talking about him. Right. So it was Matt says, you know, well, put it this way. When when Jack hit asked to interview him, somebody outside. No. <laughs> when Jack hit went to went to interview him afterwards, because when you guys left and Jack hit left. Matt didn't know anything. No, he didn't he's know totally. anything until he's contacted by um, Jack Hitt afterwards. Months, maybe almost a year afterwards. That's when he's contacted to get his to his take on the sting. And Frazier didn't know anything about it. And his manager, which is his mother, Mom. Yeah. said, you can't talk. To she refused to let him talk to the New York Times. <laughs> what the what the f is that the manager is refusing at least thomas john had the nerve to say you know come back and say something right he was interviewed and he's like oh well you know he had at least an excuse but yeah. matt was such a chicken shit that he wouldn't even let his mom his mom his, his mom manager had manager. him say something and yet here's Matt Frazier now. Oh, I was in the New York Times. Well, your little sticking chicken shit didn't want to say anything at the time. Right. But, I mean, your little snot. But <laughs> I think it was, what were you going to say before I finish up? You're going to say? So this is, this is something that Donna got when she ordered the book. Um, 
We we have an autographed picture. <laughs> what does it say? It says your loved ones are always with, with you. you. X O X O. Um, there you go. That's beautiful. Yeah, we got that too. Um, <laughs> She's got it. They've got a frame. <sighs> yeah, I got a frame. <laughs> I have it. Up. I love that. I, I hang it up. So, so you know, the other reason I think it was highly successful is because we learned so much about him. We got the newspaper article. Um, the you know the New York Times article, and this is really the first time I worked with you. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And my goal is not only to catch psychics, or whatever. My goal always has been in this community is to find people who want to do more and help them do more. Whether it's psychics or it's homeopathy or it's crystal healing or flat earth or or educating people about just how to think critically. That has always been my goal. The mission of the whole project, the whole fund, the nonprofit we have is to find those people out there. And if I can help empower you somehow, that's that's my goal is you guys and the people who are creating all those fake Facebook pages and all your right. friends and all the people who we've met over the years. That's the goal is to do that. So saying this was <laughs> unsuccessful. Yeah, we didn't catch him in a hot read, but we didn't expect him to catch him in a hot read. We we didn't catch him floating above the building either. We didn't catch him healing somebody miraculously with making their leg grow back. We weren't trying to. We really didn't expect to. Mm -hmm. So that's disingenuous to say that it was unsuccessful. It was highly successful. All right. So yeah. you, all you people listening, any of you who are Wikipedia editors, you can, can use you, this. You can use this video. It's coming from my mouth. Yeah. I'm <laughs> saying go for it. It's a citation coming out of my mm -hmm. mouth. It was highly successful. Yes, we didn't catch him hot reading, but we caught him cold reading and we learned a lot about his methods. This is not... I'm not playing the the short game here. I'm playing the long game. And it's not and if I was knocked off, if you guys take me out somehow or something happens to me, there are many people who are going to jump up in my who are going to be able to pull up and go right in and back in it. So mm -hmm. we're not letting down on these psychics, these Greek vampires. There's a lot of work to be done. And the more knowledge we have, the better. The more united we are, the better. But this is really was my first time working with you, Kenny. I've known you for a years but this was the first time i said i have a project would you like in on it <laughs> yep <laughs> yep i love doing that and, and anytime you come up and say i need help with something yeah yeah I'm, you're okay. one of the doers and i said let's get donna in here too yeah she, i know she's great yeah <laughs> and plus we needed we need women too right we we just can't yeah. have just men no so and it was great our group was uh you know good ratio <laughs> for four women to two men so yeah, it worked it out showed, perfectly <laughs> it showed it showed out how how it worked really well yeah. so i we're going to be doing a lot more of these things you you've already been involved in other things we've done mm -hmm. well, and, well jeanette wilson even oh yeah jeanette wilson yeah I've forgotten about her where's she gone <laughs> she disappeared i haven't seen anything from her <laughs> you will have to check that out Next topic <laughs> but anyway so to end the off the video, can you please tell everybody where we can find you? Uh, if you want to see more from me, you can find me on the skepticalinquirer.org uh, under my name, Kenny Biddle. You'll see all my articles and my videos that I do for the Ghosts in the Machine series. Um, and I'm also, every Friday night at 8 p.m. Eastern time, we do the Skeptical bring, Help bring Bar. Bring a drink. Yeah, bring, bring a drink. A drink. Um, hang out. It's two hours of live streaming where we sometimes have a guest sometimes we talk and just do open mic night where it's we answer questions um you throw questions at us donna sits in the background she over here for the most right most here. part <laughs> she's love having her on the camera right now this is great um, but yeah yeah and uh and it's fun and i do lectures i go around i, I talk i do workshops um i take part in a whole bunch of stuff so just google my name and you can see stuff that I, that google kenny up. biddle even the haters you'll see all the people that hate me because <laughs> their stuff comes up too that's so much fun to read uh, mm -hmm. rock you're on mute i don't get so much hate mail because most people don't know who i am but uh <laughs> and you're you can, yeah, well known <laughs> you can google yeah that, that's a facetious thing that's a whole nother story <laughs> and you could uh thank uh, jay novella for uh coming up with that title kind of like the uh the tv show finding bigfoot 
but yeah, never find yeah, anybody. Yeah. Sorry. I mean, <laughs> you know, you know how Bill Nye got his uh, his uh, name, the the science guy, because he's a science guy. No, somebody was making fun of him. He was on a TV show when he was not known by anybody, and he corrected the host, and they said, "What are you, Bill Nye, the science guy?" That's how he got it. Oh, yeah. That's very similar, very similar to how I got it. But anyway, so you can find my work on, uh, I guess the best place to look me is on Linktree, which is actually L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E slash the one known skeptic. And it's got all my stuff, including all my, what is it, 60 skeptical, 50 plus skeptical inquiry articles I write for some other places. And I have done a lot of video interviews, uh, which are on skeptical inquiry. You can find them there. Very prolific. Including Perfect. for people like... Uh, uh, let's see, Neil deGrasse Tyson, if anyone's ever heard of him. So that was my ah, one of my favorite oop, ones. Oop. And people like and Susan and fun. Kenny Biddle also. Okay, Mark. Uh, thanks, everybody, for watching. And uh, be sure to subscribe to Susan's channel. There's a lot of secrets there for you magicians who want to become psychics. <laughs> oh. here's, here's your opportunity to get, get the goods. Uh, my my <laughs> website is www.the markedward.com mm -hmm. and uh, there's a lot of books there uh palmistry and graphology <laughs> <Tarot>. and tarot cards <laughs> <laughs> all the things we're against he's they're all right he's, like a, he's a mentalist folks he's a mentalist that's okay as as there's go to my wrong What's that? Don't, don't forget there's to mention psychic psychic blues oh psychic blues yeah which i love that book. audio book uh, i highly recommend uh, so so and we're working on some other things so stay tuned thanks for having me bye <laughs> you know it's funny that he he says that about tarot cards and stuff like i i'm a big skeptic if you didn't know already i mean i have a full collection of tarot cards decks over there yeah. i have dowsing rod collection i have all kinds of haunted items like throughout my yes, office yes you got some of his moonlight we oh, yes. Do. Yes, yeah, I do. Like the homeopathy, got, the moonlight. Mark's got moonlight water right here. Isn't this beautiful? Look at this, if you guys can see. I it. know, it is beautiful. Is that the homeopathic preparation? Is it homeopathic? No, it's water. It's <laughs> well, that, Yeah, then yeah, that it is. That's right. Yeah, it's it's moonlight water. Kenny's oh, brown. there's Kenny's right there. <laughs> Mine's brown, too. Yeah, isn't that beautiful? Yeah, it turned brown. <laughs> um must be that california water <laughs> yeah all those chemicals you got in that water but yeah i made a whole a whole little uh you made a little thing for it, a display unit yeah yeah look at mark. that show it again kenny oh, I, don't think, I don't think mark saw it oh yeah i've seen that that's great <laughs> yeah. that's at the opposite then. the yeah. opposite cfi yep yeah, yeah it's right Fantastic. here Fantastic. <laughs> okay Right. So, okay. So I'm going to put in the show notes, I'm going to put the different articles that we have that we've mentioned. I hope people will, you know, this is a long format video. Sorry. It's long. It's a discussion and that's, we're friends and we're going to talk and that's how it gets with good friends, um, right. which I consider you guys all. So I hope to see you guys soon. Um, yeah. Psycon definitely in oh, October. Well, you might see me earlier. I'm going to okay. see you. I think I'm going to see you this August. Is it August or July recession? I, I, I think it's August. Yeah, August. Yeah. I think so. I think I'll see you in Oregon whenever you, you're out here speaking to, um, he's hopefully going to be in Seattle, um, Eugene, Portland, um, yeah. Oregon, so that we can, it's a long way for me, but I think I'm going to go up. Okay. We'll that see what happens awesome. around in August. And then of, of course, I'll see you at PsyCon. Oh. I think we're gonna see yeah. anything else rob i see you every thursday night on trivia i'll see you thursday trivia. Trivia. <laughs> all right thank you guys for watching please subscribe please hit the little like button that goes bing the the the, the, the button that goes bing <laughs> like and subscribe <laughs> like and subscribe thank you guys for being here with me for two hours on a sunday morning i appreciate no it. worries love you bye bye love you guys bye everybody <laughs>